Hi Phil, welcome to Holy Habitus and today we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7b to 9. I happened to preach on this passage last night so it's fresh in my mind but it seems to me to speak so clearly to this whole issue of building a holy habitus and why it's important. And Paul is writing to Timothy, his mentee, and he says this, train yourself in godliness for physical training is of some use but training in godliness is of much use, holding promise for this life now and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance. And so Paul's saying, this is a truth that you can build your life on. This is a, a starting assumption, a premise that, that you need to build into your life, that though physical training has value, it's good, spiritual training or training in godliness has surpassing value, that holds value, not just for this life now, but for the life to come. Paul says something similar in 1 Corinthians 9, where he says, you know, athletes train for a prize that will fade away, but we train for an eternal prize. And so throw yourself into this training in godliness with all the zeal and more um, as an athlete uh, training for the Olympics uh, would do. Um, run to win, he says elsewhere. And, and so we want to train ourselves in godliness. Now that word train is the word gymnazo in the Greek, from which we get our modern word gymnastics, gymnasium, or gym for short. And we get gyms, we understand the concept of gyms. One in seven people in the UK belong to a gym. That's more than go to church, uh, sadly. Um, but our, our culture gets um, gymnasiums, they, they get the gym, that you need to go to a place to stretch muscles, to work muscles, to do exercise, to um, get your heart beating in order to have a healthier lifestyle and to enjoy those benefits in the rest of life. And, uh, and how much more then, Paul would say, do we need to go to the soul gym? to exercise, exercise ourselves in godliness. Now the Holy Spirit's doing that work in us, he's trying to produce the fruit of, of, his, of his nature and personality and character in us, um, but how much more um, uh, progress will he make if we cooperate with him rather than frustrate and impede that work in us? And so let's train ourselves in godliness. The challenge I put out last night and which I put out this week is what one spiritual exercise in soul gym will make the biggest impact perhaps as we seek to become more Christ-like? What one exercise um, would make the biggest impact? Would it be practicing silence regularly in a world of noise? Would it be practicing solitude in a world of frenetic activity? Would it be practicing fasting or frugality in a world of excess? Would it be practicing celebration in a world where a party is, is, is synonymous with getting drunk? Um, would it be practicing Bible study, going deep into the word or, or learning how to pray more fervently? Which practice is it for you that will help you as you train for godliness, that you might shine like a star in this dark world and run the race for him today?